Cleveland Cavaliers power forward Kevin Love is getting a lot of praise for an article he recently wrote about mental health. Here with his take on Love's article is Pete Davidson. Thank you. Thanks, Colin. Thanks. Uh, I think I speak for all crazy people when I say... That's good. It made me laugh earlier. Yeah, that's good. I'm crazy people like yeah. that. So, uh, so last week, Kevin Love, uh, one of the least hateable white guys on the planet, uh, he opened up about a panic attack he had during a basketball game, and he said it opened his eyes to how no one should be too proud to talk to a mental health expert if they need it. Uh, the article was commendable. It was praised, but quite frankly, Colin, I, I didn't care for it very much. You, you, you didn't like it? No, it was fine. He's a good guy. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> whatever. Like, it's totally cool that like he had a panic attack. But if you're gonna write an article about being unstable, leave it to the big boys. All right? <laughs> I'm sorry you missed your three pointer, Kev. But uh, I've been in therapy since I was six years old, and uh, I wanted to kill myself when I was eight. Tough news about your rebounds, though. <laughs> I'm sorry. Are you like bragging? So what if I am? <laughs> so what? I love being mentally ill. I'm so relieved, you know, that everybody knows that. Now I don't have to hide anything. It's amazing. If I'm out, if I'm, I'm like out somewhere and I'm like acting like a dick, everyone's like, oh no, no, he's like mentally ill. <laughs> you know. And if I'm happy, they're like, oh, good for him. You know. <laughs> But now, you know, Kevin Love just waltzes in with his little panic attack, and he just waters the whole thing down. I gotta say, Pete, it sounds like you're jealous. I am jealous. Like, look, <laughs> like, Kevin Love is a handsome, rich basketball player, okay? His uncle's a beach boy, all right? The worst one, but it's still sick, you know? <laughs> He's got it all, man. He doesn't need my one thing, you know, like, let me have that. Or trade me uncles. You know, your uncle's out there touring, making the world a better place. When I was six, my uncle took me camping, and then it started raining, and I heard thunder, and I crapped my pants in the rain, and then I told my uncle what I did, and he punched me in the face. <laughs> and then my mom told me not to tell my dad, because my dad would kill him, and then my dad died, like, a month later. But again, sorry about your free throw percentage! <laughs> Um, in Kevin's defense, he is right. Uh, <laughs> no, I gotta say that so people don't get mad, you know? I gotta pretend that I care about this guy. Uh, <laughs> no, if you, ever, if you ever have a panic attack, you should see a mental health professional, and no matter how minimal the episode, you know? But just do me a favor, you know, and, like, stay in your lane. All right? You know, I can't stay in my lane because I'm on a ton of Klonopin right now. Uh, Colin, are my eyes crossed? No. Pete no. Davidson, everyone. I got new teeth. I got new teeth. The manager of an IHOP in Maine has apologized after a waiter asked a group of black teenagers to pay up front for their meal, which is weird because most people who eat IHOP pay for it about two hours later. <laughs> Well, the, federal <laughs> <laughs> the Federal Trade Commission has ordered the makers of the Snuggie to pay more than $7 million in refunds over deceptive buy one, get one free ads. It's a rare piece of good news for people who own multiple Snuggies. <laughs> the winner of America's best license plate is New Mexico's chili capital of the world plate, while the worst is New Jersey's defa you looking at. <laughs> And today is St. Patrick's Day, which means millions of tourists have come to the Big Apple. Here with some tips for what they could check out is our weekend update city correspondent, Stefan. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us, Stefan. Connor, Percy, it's nice to be here. Okay. Thank you, Stefan. So, so the parade is now over. I bet a lot of people are out there looking for a great New York hangout. Do you have any recommendations? Yes. If you're drunk in Midtown, doing cheap coke off your laundry card, I have just the place for you. New York's hottest club is Gersh. Inspired by true events. This, this former CVS, which became a Chase Bank, 
and then became a CVS again. <laughs> Has a familiar yet troubling feel. Like when Larry King would play himself in a movie. <laughs> This place has everything. Death sets, key fobs, kale chips, Roman J. Israel Esquire. <laughs> Plus, you can play everyone's favorite party game, The Stranger. Now, what's The Stranger? Do you know that Billy Joel song, The Stranger? Yeah. Well, it's when you sit on Billy Joel's hand until it's numb, and then you rub yourself with it. <laughs> Wait. Wait, why, why does it have to be numb? So you can pretend it's Bruce Springsteen's hand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so, so fine, let's get back on track, okay? I think, I think a lot of people are in town for St. Patrick's Day, and they might be looking for something a little different, you know? Yeah, something more Irish-themed. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Moonlight, La La Land. <laughs> <both right. laughs> if, if you're Irish or just white and violent, <laughs> I have the St. Patty's place for you. New York's hottest Irish club is Off the Church, Mother! <laughs> Located in the clogged heart of the Bronx at the corner of 3000th Street and Gary Marshall Memorial Drive, this gang ridden skateboard park was the ceremony spot for Vern Troyer's 2004 wedding. <laughs> this place has everything peeps, TED Talks, Roman J. Israel Esquire. <laughs> And be sure to hit the dance floor and do a jig with Ireland's hottest Farrakhans. Wait, Louis Farrakhan is at this club? No, Farrakhans, leprechauns that look like Farrah Fawcett. <laughs> but also, yes, Minister Farrakhan will be there. <laughs> All right, Stefan. Please call me by your name. Fine, Colin, just give us that one place. Tell us that one place that ordinary tourists might enjoy, please. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> if you're ordinary and you love seizure-inducing Malaysian music, <laughs> I have just a place for you. New York's hottest club is Stand Clear of the Closing Doors, Please! <laughs> Built in the upside-down world, this haunted hospice was closed when inspectors found a sexy form of asbestos that could cause disease. Now, what disease do you get from sexy asbestos? Misohornioma. Oh. <laughs> this place has everything. Young popes, old popes, <laughs> Roman J. Israel escort. <laughs> but avoid the dance floor on Wednesdays when, dozen, when a dozen hot dachshunds and corgis get in free. They call it long and low nights. <laughs> I don't trust any dog whose stomach touches the ground. <laughs> Plus, you can party in the VIP room with a group of human squatty potties. Now, what is a human squatty potty? It's that thing of, you know what, it's a new era, and I don't want to say a word that could be insensitive. May I consult my lawyer quickly? Sure, yeah. Great. He's an attorney and a conceptual piss artist <laughs> named Shy. Shy? Oh. Hi. Hi, Shy. Hello, gentlemen. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Shy, do people still use the word? <laughs> Human squatty potties. It's that thing of when you sit on the toilet and to have good posture, two little people <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
crouch on the bathroom floor and you put your feet on their heads. <laughs> I'm really glad you made sure to make that not insensitive. Thank you very much. That's on great. That note, let's take a closer look at political correctness. Wait, isn't a closer look Seth's thing? Oh, Seth and I are versatile. Some nights I do it and he's under the desk. <laughs>